Hey everyone, my name is Blake Cadwell. I'm the co-founder at Soundly.com. And in this video, we're gonna take a deep dive into the world of Bluetooth as it relates to our hearing aids. Now, most current modern devices stream audio through our phones into our ears. So the hearing aids I'm wearing now stream audio from Spotify, audiobooks, podcasts. I can even take phone calls with hands-free microphones that capture outbound sound and inbound sound. Essentially, these are a pair of AirPods but we're in the middle of a transition to a new protocol called Bluetooth Low Energy Audio. This is going to unlock some exciting new experiences, but it also means as consumers, we need to be prepared and intelligent as we make buying decisions over the next couple of years. So in this video, we're gonna get into all of that. Let's get started. Now, Bluetooth made its way first into hearing aids in about 2005, when Starkey, one of the big hearing aid manufacturers, added a little piece that you plugged into the bottom of your hearing aid to enable Bluetooth connection. It was pretty clunky, had very low adoption. But then a few years later, a number of years later, Resound launched a product that actually connected with iPhones seamlessly. And they worked with Apple to launch MFI or made for iPhone as a new protocol where you could essentially go into the accessibility settings of your iPhone, you could choose a pair of hearing aids, and that would unlock a world of Bluetooth experiences. And that essentially is where we are today. If you're an iPhone user, like I am, you essentially still go through those same steps. You're accessing Bluetooth through MFI using this backdoor that Resound and Apple created, and now all the other hearing aid manufacturers use as well. A few years later, Google joined and they created their own backdoor approach, which is called Asha, and essentially allows you to do the same things using an Android device and your hearing aids. So that's where things stand. Our hearing aids connect to Bluetooth, it's a little bit clunky. Sometimes the quality is not fantastic, but the whole thing works. Now this is where things get exciting, especially if you're interested in change and improvement to how we stream through our hearing devices. A few years ago, a number of hearing aid manufacturers went to the Bluetooth SIG or special interest group and essentially explained that this MFI and ASHA backdoor program was passable, but it wasn't really working that well. They wanted to know if Bluetooth could write a new protocol for how hearing aids should connect with phones and make it all a little bit simpler. Essentially, the Bluetooth SIG went to work. They started pulling apart the code that makes up Bluetooth, and they realized the entire thing needed an update. They needed to bring a new way, a lower energy, more efficient, more quality way to send audio signals from one device to another device. And ultimately they came up with Bluetooth low energy audio, which will become the standard over the next four or five years. Now, before you get too excited, it will take a couple of years for hearing aid wearers to fully realize the benefits of Bluetooth low energy audio, while phone makers and hearing aid makers get all of their systems updated. But ultimately this new protocol is going to lead to better sound quality, more stability. In some cases we're finding that low energy connected devices can go up to four times further without that crackling that you hear in your ears when you walk away from your phone. And maybe most importantly, Bluetooth low energy audio will allow you to connect to your hearing aids just like you do any other Bluetooth device, probably just in the settings and Bluetooth section, instead of having to go to accessibility and set up a whole separate program that connects to your hearing aids using MFI or ASHA. This will really simplify the onboarding process, especially for new hearing aid users, or for anyone whose hearing aids have disconnected, and now they're just trying to go back through the process and remember all of those individual steps. So it's going to be a big upgrade for hearing aid wearers who like to use Bluetooth with their devices. But there's one more really exciting feature that Bluetooth Low Energy Audio unlocks for hearing aid wearers, and that is called AuraCast. And I actually had a chance to sit down with the Bluetooth SIG last week to talk about what enabled AuraCast and what consumers and hearing aid wearers in particular can expect from AuraCast in the future. So perhaps the easiest way to understand AuraCast is to imagine walking into a sports bar where you have lots of different games, each on their own screen. And in the past, you'd have to choose one bit of audio to play into the room, or maybe you just watch them all on silent. Now with AuraCast, for headphone wearers or for hearing aid wearers, those TVs can send an outbound signal, which you could then select on your phone, and now you're tapped into 
a viewing experience of a particular sports game that you're interested in. Now you can imagine how this goes well beyond just hearing aid wearers. Someone who walks into a sports bar with a pair of AirPods or is in an airport and wants to watch the CNN program instead of listening to something else can simply tap into that stream. And this is what Oracast really enables. You can imagine other use cases like church services, theaters, or certainly as PSAs come through an airport speaker system. For anyone who has hearing loss, this will give them a real augmentation and allow them to tap into shared audio experiences in a brand new way. Very practically, it'll also allow anyone, hearing aid wearers or earbud wearers, to simply share an audio signal from their phone to multiple pairs of earbuds. So for example, if you wanna watch a movie on your iPad and you want your spouse to be able to watch it and you watch it, you could listen through your hearing aids, they could listen through their AirPods and the audio is going to sync to you seamlessly using Bluetooth low energy audio and specifically this feature called Oracast. All right, so all of this is very exciting. And what I really tried to get to the bottom of with the Bluetooth SIG when I met with them is how far we are away from these types of experiences. Here's what they shared with me. There are certain devices on the market that actually allow you to experience the full Bluetooth low energy benefit suite, if you will. For example, a Samsung S23 phone is already Bluetooth low energy audio capable, meaning it can send out a Bluetooth low energy audio stream to any compatible device. So for example, if you have a S23 phone and you have the latest Resound Nexia hearing aids, you can even tap into Oracast streams if they're available around you using that tech setup. Low energy audio is not yet available for iPhone phones and many other phone brands. We expect that this will roll out over the next couple of years. We also expect that many public spaces will begin to adopt the transmitters that you need to send out low energy audio signal to devices like hearing aids and, and earbuds, but that will all take time. In general, I would imagine three or four years down the road, this may become a more mainstream behavior as phones and devices are all picked up. But as a hearing aid wearer, or specifically a hearing aid shopper, if you're on the market for a new pair of devices, it is worth considering that purchasing a pair of hearing aids that is Bluetooth low energy audio enabled will allow you to tap into these simpler, more high quality, more convenient experiences, potentially in two or three years. Many hearing aid wearers will keep their devices for three, four, five years. So it actually becomes really important to select the right product on the market that has some of these features enabled, especially if Bluetooth is really important to you. So the products that are on the market as of the time of this recording that have Bluetooth low energy built in are Resound Nexia, Signia IX, and Oticon Intent. We expect other devices will join them even over the next few months. And certainly by the end of the year, we're expecting a lot of hearing aids will have Bluetooth low energy audio capabilities. But it's a question that's worth asking to your audiologist or taking a close look at if you're purchasing online, making sure you're future-proofing yourself for what could be a really important part of being a hearing aid wearer in two or three years. In general, there is a lot to be excited about if you are a hearing aid wearer and you're someone who likes to experience media, phone calls, and of course the world around you. I hope this has been helpful as you better understand the evolving world of Bluetooth, low energy audio, and we wish you the best in your research.